Hey guys, and welcome back to another video in what used to be my filming studio. Um, as you can see, it is pretty trashed at the moment, and that's just due to all the projects that I've been working on here. Um, the main one being front and center here. This is my new machine that is uh, de designated primarily to running Folding at Home. Um, now, Folding at Home is a distributed computing platform um, basically, it takes a whole slew of different computers, um, whoever signs up for it and installs it on their computer, and integrates them as nodes into like a virtualized supercomputer, basically. So, scientists and organizations that need to do certain types of research can send tasks to this essentially just enormous network of computers, um, and they will each independently crunch away on the data and send back their individual little results on their parts of it. So they each get a little piece of the data to work on and then send it back. Um, now, in light of uh, recent circumstances, um, mainly the virus that's been going around, the Folding at Home uh, team and the whole, the whole project has had a huge, huge surge in activity. So, this is my attempt to contribute into the project to help with research to just well in general just um do what do my part do what i can um so i felt like showing it off and getting a little bit of content out there um this actually this machine was going to originally be my uh, editing slash rendering machine uh, you'll notice a dual socket system this is a uh, socket 2011 server motherboard uh, we have two Intel Xeon chips in here. They're four cores, eight threads each. They're nothing special. Um, I don't actually know the specific model number of those. It's not really that important. Um, what is is the fact that the Z600 is actually more powerful. Um, outperforms it by like 30, 40 percent, which is, I mean, kind of to be expected. These are fairly low-end Socket 2011 chips. I think they were about $30 a piece. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the important thing here for folding at home are these two guys. These are two RX 470 four gigabyte cards. These were X mining cards, but they still run nice and strong. Um, I think I picked them up for about 60 bucks a piece on eBay about a year ago. And I've been using them for this kind of stuff ever since, and they run great. So those are the two main compute units within this system. And they're capable enough. They're definitely not like a high-end GPU, but they're good enough for crunching some numbers and they get the job done. So anyway, um, folding at home. Basically, they're kind of overloaded at the moment, but not from the sense that you would think. They actually have too much compute power behind their network for their, um, their distribution nodes, or at least how I understand it. There are servers that are in charge of breaking up a task and sending out individual pieces of it to these computers. Well, those servers are not able to do that fast enough. So these, all the different nodes are kind of hit and miss whether they're actually going to have work or not. So mine's been idle about half the time. Right now it's actually idle because it's, these cards have a considerable amount of coil line on them, so you can really tell when they're under load. Um, Right now, they are not. You would probably hear it in the camera. It's a really, really annoying little high-pitched buzz that they make. But anyway, um, yeah, it's not under load right now. But they are working on increasing their um, power behind their distribution nodes and creating more of them. So we should start to see, as time progresses, um, more availability for work units and things like that for these. So I suspect within the next week or so, this guy will start getting hit much, much harder, um, which is a good thing. Um, that's what it's meant to do. So, um, but yeah, the point of all of this is basically I want to encourage anyone who has some junk hardware, any spare compute power, old video cards sitting in a closet somewhere in a shoebox, whatever, dig that stuff out. If you have the ability to put it in something and run it towards this project, do it because right now it is critical. Any any little bit of additional compute power we can contribute to this project 
helps out. It helps with disease research. It helps with cancer research. It helps with everything like that. This is a fantastic project, and I think anybody who has the ability to contribute to it really should, um, especially just when it comes down to techie people that have just tons of hardware laying around that's really not doing anything. Now, yes, this will increase electric bills, so that is something to bear in mind. Um, it's Obviously, it's running a couple of GPUs at full power, so they're going to be drawing, I don't know, 120, 130 watts a piece in the case of these cards. Um, higher end GPUs could be a couple hundred watts. Um, so yeah, that's obviously going to have an impact on your um, power usage. Um, that being said, I still think it's a worthy cause, and if you have, if you're financially stable enough to um, contribute to it, I suggest it. Um, or at least heavily encourage people to contribute to the project. Now, I don't have my own team set up for this. I know a lot of YouTubers, they do. Um, frankly, I'm just going to um, contribute to one of their teams, and I don't care really about the whole chasing points aspect of this. I know a lot of people are competitive with it. They like to, um, they really like to try to see if they can beat another team or whatever, and that's that's great and all, but I really don't have the money to be putting towards a lot of hardware to do any sort of com uh, competitive nature to this. So I don't care where my points go as long as they're, in, in the end, contributing towards that end, uh, end result. Um, but yeah, that's really about all I have here for you guys. Um, I just wanted to discuss this a little bit with you and kind of encourage everyone that has the ability and has the hardware to uh, participate and join in on the project, and especially once they start ramping up the number of work units out there. Like literally, um, as soon as they're able to push out enough work units for all the hardware on the network, we just, you need more people on the network to, um, to get those. So right now we're at the point where they have so many users that they can't keep up, but that's going to change soon enough. So uh, the more people we can get on this, the better in the long run. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this informative and I hope everybody stays safe out there and, you know, follow all the guidelines that everybody's saying, you know, wash your hands, all that stuff. Um, stay six feet from people, keep your distance, practice all the social distancing things they're talking about. Just stay safe as best as you can. This is a nasty thing we're dealing with right now. We'll make it through it, and until next time, guys, I hope you have a good one.